Okay, hi. I'm sure that the previous section when I dealt with all the, the, the different terms such as curvature, acceleration and velocity may seem a bit confusing initially. However, now we're going to put all those terms together and just look at a problem, okay, which we're going to look at all the aspects like of a single problem and all those terms. But before we do that, here's the interesting part that we defined just now. We defined that a curve can have the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. So, for example, if the curve, I just draw a small one, is like that, okay, this is the unit normal vector and this is the unit tangent vector. So it seems to me that the acceleration can be somehow split or decomposed, if you will, from those two vectors, such that it will get something like that. Because it makes sense, the tangent vector and the normal vector are mutually perpendicular to each other, so the acceleration can, component can be decomposed in terms of those two vectors. Where it somehow turns out that that can be the case, and that is written as this. The acceleration of a particle is equal to differentiate the velocity in terms of t and you times that by the tangent, unit tangent vector and you add up 1 over rho times by v squared and times that by the normal vector. That is the acceleration. We have decomposed the acceleration in terms of the tangent vector, unit tangent vector in terms of the unit normal vector. Well, as always, we might be asking why, how can that be the case? Because I absolutely see no relation. Well, there's a way to show that and I'm gonna show it to you right now. Okay, we will start with the unit tangent vector, which let's just write in terms of t. Okay, remember, recall definition of the unit tangent vector is the vector of magnitude one that is tangential to the curve, okay? And by that definition, we can just simply write it as 1 over the first derivative of the position vector. Please refer to the, the, sec, the, the section after the previous one, or before the previous one, to really derive what I mean, or to really look at what I mean. So, since it's a unit length, we will just take the magnitude of this vector, which is the first derivative of the position vector, to give us a tangential vector, vector divided by its own magnitude to get the unit tangent vector. Okay. And later, we also know that this is equal to v, the velocity, and this we just denote as the velocity vector vt. Okay, that's what it means. This is the unit tangent vector. It's just changing the notation, the velocity vector divided by its own magnitude, the speed, because we want to introduce the concept of acceleration later. So, bring this over, and just let's just... Um, Think of the, the t's, we just leave out the parameter for now, and we'll just write it as v over t. We'll just bring this over the other side, it's equal to v, the velocity vector. Okay, so speed times the unit tangent vector is equal to the velocity vector. It makes sense. Okay, you'll see why I left out the parameter in a, in a, in a minute, okay, but let's just take it as that. Okay, so we, are, we have this one over here, okay, which is the speed times the, the unit tangent vector gives us the velocity vector. Okay, so what do we know about the acceleration vector? Well, the acceleration vector is the first derivative of the velocity vector. Likening to the um, kinematics, right? You differentiate the velocity in terms of time, you get the acceleration. So that is what we're going to do. Acceleration is equal to differentiate the velocity vector in terms of time here, like this. And this is equal to this, so we can differentiate this whole thing here in terms of t. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, bear in mind that v is a scalar function, t is a vector function. But we know by the rules of differentiating a compound function, sorry, not compound function, but a function which has a real value function and a vector function similar to this notation if you have seen it before. We just differentiate the first function and keep the second one, times it together, and we add up by keeping the first one and differentiating the second one, similar to the product rule. I'm sure you're familiar with that. So, differentiating this dv over dt, keeping the, tangent, the unit tangent vector, and then we add up by keeping the velocity vector, sorry, the, velo yeah, the velocity function, and then differentiating the unit tangent vector. 
in terms of t. All this is in terms of t because acceleration is differentiating in terms of t. So what do we know? The first component over here is equal to here, which is good. That is good. Okay. So now we need to somehow make this equal to this one over here. Okay. So let's look at it. V equals to differentiating the unit the unit tangent vector in terms of t. Okay. But we recall in the previous section the definition of the unit normal vector, which we have also shown, okay, s equals to rho differentiate the unit tangent vector in terms of s. Okay, now that looks to me a bit tricky over there in terms of s. Okay, but now here is differentiate t in terms of t. Now notice that these two are different. We are, we're differentiating with respect to a different variable, so we need to pay attention about that. But that can be easily solved by putting v. Now we're going to differentiate the, the, the vector, the unit tangent vector t in terms of s, so that we get this form over here, differentiating the unit tangent vector in terms of s, but I'm not done yet because now I need to times by differentiating s in terms of t via chain rule, okay? I hope you understand that. Since I want to differentiate this in terms of another variable, I'm going to do that over here by the times by differentiating that variable by with respect to the original um, with respect term that I was set to differentiate out. It's just similar to chain rule, okay? And then we know that we can find this one over here. So this one, d differentiate t in terms of s is simply 1 over rho n s okay okay so this one over here but we also know that differentiating s in terms of t is equal to v so v times over here we get 1 over rho from here from this one over here times by v times v and then left with n there we go um, bear in mind the commutative principle of multiplication of uh, real value functions and vector functions. So this one is what we got over here. So lastly, acceleration is equal to dv dt times by the unit tangent vector plus 1 over rho v squared times by the unit normal vector. And we will also write that as, which I would bring it up here again, I don't know why I wrote it down there, okay, it doesn't matter, okay, because I will want to write this also equals to a t times t and a n times n over here. Okay, when this is called the tangential component and this is called the normal component. Similar like how we just times the normal component by the normal vector to get the, the whole vector. Likewise, to re-emphasize that t and n are unit tangent and unit normal vectors. That is why you need to times by the tangential components to give you the acceleration over here. And that is how it all fits nicely together. Another point that I would like to emphasize is that the n over here is in terms of s. Also, but the t over here in terms of t. Now this may seem a little confusing at the moment, okay? But let's just take it as that. Because, like I said, when we're dealing with all these vector functions, it's quite difficult to change the variable t and x. And we also need to look at the context of the problem. In this case, the context of this problem is finding the acceleration. And that would mean differentiating in terms of the parameter, which is what we did. That's why t was written in terms of s. But later when we make the substitution, we differentiate in terms of s, we apply the chain rule, that is how we introduce the normal vector in terms of s over here. Seems a bit complicated at the moment, but later I'll show, after this I'll show you another problem where we really relate the variables together and everything fits in quite nicely. So the main uh, subject of this lesson is finding the acceleration. We broke it down in unit, unit, unit tangent, unit normal, and we times by a constant, if you will, called the tangential component and the normal component to give us the acceleration. Okay, and that is the lesson for today. There's a problem coming up which is quite interesting, so uh, stay tuned.